Angel Wing. Chapter 6, Hospital Homecoming. Delilah woke up on Wednesday morning feeling excited and relieved. If all went well, she'd be leaving today with a hospital discharge. Her arm had healed completely, yet her ribs still felt tender. She had to take steady, controlled breaths, not to feel a twinge from the repaired ribcage. At 11.30, a nurse entered with a wheelchair. Delilah thought she was overreacting to her condition until she tried standing up and nearly collapsed. She took a seat in the wheelchair, feeling self-conscious, but the nurse just smiled and wheeled her out of the room without comment. The halls were somewhat empty, here and there a doctor or two, and sometimes a patient would be strolling down the corridor. She didn't even bother paying attention to the direction they were going. She was too preoccupied, keeping her breaths at a steady rhythm. They turned the corner and entered a reception area. Alastair was there already, sitting in a chair, his hands on his lap. He stood up upon seeing her, and her breath stuck in her throat. Alistair wasn't wearing his usual garb, all dark green robes and cloak, but a pair of jeans and a dark green t-shirt. No shoes or socks. He wore a jacket made of the same material that his travelling pack was made of. If she had to guess, it looked like DRAGON SKIN! His ornamental glove was still on his left hand, concealing the mystical replica. He had cut his ponytail off and had gotten a trim. He looked more ordinary than before. She subconsciously comprehend how handsome he looked. Apparently the nurse thought so as well, for when she handed the clipboard to Alistair to sign, she blushed. Alistair signed the forms with, ra with rather elegant handwriting, and then handed it back. The nurse blushed scarlet again before turning and leaving a pair of them. Alistair ignored her and looked down at Delilah. How are you feeling? Ready to go home? Absolutely! The wheelchair won't be necessary, he said, preferring his arm to her. Delilah grasped his arms, and Alistair pulled up out of the chair. Delilah's legs shook slightly as her weight settled upon her legs, but Alistair settled her, steadied her. Her legs felt like limp noodles. But the feeling started to fade away after a moment, and Alistair held up her coat, and Delilah slid it on. It was warm, but not as comfortable as the cloak Alistair had made for her. Alistair put an arm out to her, and she took it, feeling better that Alistair was there. They walked out of the reception area to the exit. Coming up next, Tiger Woods will be putting at the 17th hole at a three par. Delilah had never walked side by side with Alistair. His stride was wider than normal. Every two of her steps equaled one of his. She also realized how much taller he was than her. If he were to lean up against his chest, her head would barely fit under his chin. For a moment, she thought of doing it, but then she wanted to get home and see her family. Alistair walked around another corner and the hospital entrance stood before them. The sliding doors opened automatically for them. The outside air was chilly, but a car was waiting for them. It was black and looked brand new. Alistair opened the guard door for her. The car was furnished in black leather and extremely warm. Delilah slid in and Alistair followed. The car was more open than she thought. There was a window with the width of the car separating the driver from the passengers. A young man she didn't recognize was sitting in the driver's seat. With a nod from Alistair, the driver put the car in gear and they were off. Alistair didn't say anything while in the car. Delilah was warm and comfortable with a scent of vanilla softly wafting around the car. She wanted to close her eyes and sleep. She leaned against Alistair and closed her eyes. Alistair silently slid his arm around her, allowing her to rest a little more comfortably. The smell of vanilla increased slightly. She realized that it became easier to breathe. She breathed deeply and felt no pain. She felt fully relaxed. Whether she'd actually gone fallen asleep or not, Delilah never found out. She only registered Alistair, shaking her gently. She opened her eyes. They were parked outside her house. The car was soothingly warm, and Alistair's quiet voice came to her attention. If we wait here much longer, your parents will start to worry that something's wrong. Come on, sleeping beauty. Time to wake up. I will shake you if I have to. She snuggled closer as a response. He chuckled softly. Ha ha ha! A door opened, and the brisk air drifted in. Delilah clung closer to Alistair for warmth, but Alistair slid out into the cool air. He turned around and scooped Delilah into his arms. She was reminding of a sleepy child a parent would carry to bed after falling asleep. Only the stabbing pain in her ribs kind of shook her away from that idea. His body heat was sufficient to keep her content. The car door closed by itself, and the car drove off. 
driving down the street, turning the corner, vanishing from view, and probably going over the same embankment that she did. Alistair paid no attention to it, though. He turned and walked towards that. He turned and walked towards the house. He reached the door, and Delilah heard the doorbell ring. The door opened, and after three seconds, Mrs. Rowan Hart's voice came to Delilah's ears. There you are, Alistair. Is she asleep? Yes. I'll just take her up then. Shall I? Mrs. Ronhart didn't answer, but probably nodded because Alistair walked inside and headed upstairs. The carpet muffled his usually quiet footsteps to silence. Alistair had apparently been to Delilah's room, or he was just a good navigator, because he pushed open a door and stepped into Delilah's room. Delilah had cleaned up her room somewhat, but it was still messy. How did Delilah clean up her room while she was still in the hospital is anyone's guess. Maybe she's psychic, but she still remembered this as Alistair stepped over her books, clothing, and other possessions. Alistair didn't seem to notice. I'm sorry. I haven't cleaned my room in a while, Delilah said, blushing and using the wrong voice. I don't mind. Everybody's room gets cluttered. So should I stay or should I go for a while, said Alistair. Could you stay a little longer? I like having you around. Makes my voice sound awesome! I'll stay as long as you like. Alistair sat down on the bed and cuddled Delilah. It felt wonderful just to sit there, listening to Alistair's steady breathing, the rhythmic pulse under his skin, and the soft fragrance of vanilla. Delilah felt protected in his warm embrace. Alistair began to hum delicately, and Delilah recognized the tune as the same Alistair had hummed the night before he left for Atria. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older? Then we wouldn't have to wait so long. And wouldn't it be nice to leave? That melody. What's it called? I haven't chosen a name for it yet. I arranged it shortly after meeting you. It's kind of been your song. Would you like a proper name for it? Well, sure, but what kind of name would fit? Well, I was thinking Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the ABC song, Ba Ba Black Sheep, or how about, he muttered, Eternal Elegy? I like that. It suits the melody very well! <sighs> Alistair sighed. His left hand budged. Alistair, can I look at your hand? Alistair lifted his right hand. The other one, stupid! Alistair sighed, then took off the glove. His hand glittered and pulsed from both light within and out. He lifted the hand to the eye level and turned it back and forth. Does it do anything other than, you know, replace your original? I mean, it is a magic hand. I should be impressed that it's even working, but no, does it do anything else? Asked Delilah attentively. A few things, if you wish to see, he said apprehensively. Delilah nodded. Alistair pointed to the desk. The tip of the index finger glowed like a firefly. A pencil quivered and then rose into the air and whizzed through the air as it set to sit in Alistair's hand. Alistair's palm glowed and the pencil lifted into the air again and began spinning. Ca ceaselessly, several inches above the stony digits. Delilah sta stared, awestruck, at the pencil as it landed back on the desk with a small clatter. I can do more simple tasks in this world if my strength holds out. In my world, however, the possibilities are much, much more numerous. But I believe you've had enough entertainment for today. I should be going. Delilah just nodded, still gazing at the magical hand until it disappeared inside the glove. Mike and Annalise are still planning on rock climbing on the weekend. Do you still want to come? I've asked your parents, and they say we're fine as long as we're careful. Well, Delilah hesitated, wondering. She'd never done rock climbing, but neither had Alistair. Besides, both Mike and Annalise had experience, and Mike was quite experienced, having done it for years. She only changed her perspective on the matter. Also, can help that she apparently no longer felt stabbing pain from her numerous injuries, bruised ribs and such. Excellent! We'll have fun! You'll see! And with that, <laughs> and with that, Alistair left the room. End of chapter six!